the discussion platform of the University of Groningen. My name is Tamara Slief and I'm talking today with Dr. Michael Cutter uh, from the University of Groningen on uh, the financial crisis. Michael, uh, a few months ago we talked uh, on the uh, crisis on the housing market uh, hmm. in the United States. What happens uh, after that? What? Uh -huh. Not much new, uh, in a sense. Uh, we, we, have, we see something like a slow motion crisis, which in itself, of course, is an oxymoron, if we want to put it like this. We do not have seen these dramatic uh, Black Mondays or terrible slums and asset prices in just one day. Uh, instead, we have seen, since we talked and, and also before, that the crisis is lingering on and the uh, house markets are still down. Uh, house prices are continuing to deteriorate in the United States, in selected European countries. And um, that much of an update, in addition to all this, the crisis spilled over from the mortgage market or housing market in the U.S. both uh, to other nations as well as to other markets, such as wholesale funding, for example. But is the worst uh, still to come, or how, f how long will it last? <laughs> if I knew, I guess I will be a rich man tomorrow, so uh, I, cannot, I cannot tell you uh, it's going to last X days or anything like that, neither can I anybody else, I think. Um, but what can be certainly stated is that uh, the majority of experts, in my view at least, uh, would agree that the worst is yet to come. We did not yet see the bottom of the crisis. It's very hard to predict, I think, when we will see the turnaround, especially because it is such a slow motion crisis. We do not have this spectacular unfolding of one correction that is coming and thereafter uh, people know that this was the bottom. Um, my take is personally that we will see further spillovers in a negative sense to other segments of the market simply because much of the uh, losses that we see, for instance, booked with banks are based on mark-to-market uh, of assets that are just not traded and very hard to price. Therefore, in the end, it's second-guessing at best that these bankers do about the value of the assets. And it remains to be seen whether they are right or not and conservative enough. So what should be done? Because uh, it's very uh, hard to, uh, to grab. Mm -hmm. um, wh what can be done to, uh, to stop this crisis? I think and that is uh, basically what I said already a couple of months ago already, that the main issue must be to re-establish trust in the financial system. And this is something that we see is still lacking by, uh, for example, if we look at the uh, wholesale funding markets, we still do see that these markets are not totally dried up, but they're still not as liquid and deep as they used to be. And this is simply a reflection, I think, of the inherent uncertainty of also many participants in the financial industry. This trust has to be re-established. How can that be done? Um, as I plead beforehand, I, s I think that one of the key issues is increasing and enhancing transparency. So if supervisors have the possibility to mm, make market participants reveal and constantly update their evaluations of their books and communicate that transparently, I think this would be a bold move at the moment, but a necessary move to, as I said, re-establish confidence in the system. So that sounds uh, very hard. What, what would be the first step to do? I think um, the first step to do, <laughs> it's, that's a very hard <laughs> question as well, simply because there are many steps that have to be taken at the same time, I think. Uh, the first step to do is that market participants, as I said, um, are prudent and conservative when conducting, their evalu conducting the evaluation of their assets. As said, these are frequently hard to evaluate assets simply because they are not frequently traded, because they are multi-layer products that are basically functioning uh, for the principle that I take, I give out a loan but then I sell it off and it disappears somewhere in the nirvana of the financial system. And I can, mark, uh, I can evaluate it 100 bucks or I can evaluate it 10 bucks. My take is the first step must be banks must certainly be on the conservative side. Though, so, so value it low, value it frequently and communicate this to the supervisor. The second step is in my view, if banks do not want to do this for obvious reasons, yeah. um, the supervisor and not only banks but also other market participants such as hedge funds, pension funds, other institutional investors, insurances and so forth. Um, if these do not want to reveal critical, crucial, important, sensitive information voluntarily, my suggestion is that the second thing that has to happen is that supervisors have to take a stance and they probably have to force as far as they can within the given regulatory environment 
uh, this they have to enforce this transparency. So that's uh, your statement actually for today. Um, the, the regulators uh, do have an important role uh, in, the, uh, in the crisis. Um, I think that it has to go one step further. It's not only that the regulator has an important role, and I do not only think in accordance with what I already said that uh, regulators have to enhance transparency. I would go even further and say since there are so many different market participants which are supervised by so many different supervisory institutions, the conduct of supervision and enhancing authority has to be centralized as well. So my uh, conjecture is basically centralized supervision in conjunction with enhanced transparency. That will help. <laughs> I, I, uh, it certainly won't do any more harm, but that's of course a simple uh, statement because it's hard to do any more harm in this <laughs> terrible situation. <laughs> okay, so Michael Cutter's statement is centralize the, uh, the regulation, uh, the regulators, to uh, uh, enhance uh, the, uh, the control on, uh, on, the, uh, on the market. Thank mm -hmm. you. You can react on uh, our website and uh, give your opinion. Thank you.